So the federal government is trying to put a man in prison for life for selling a business card with this design on it. Does that sound insane to you? Well, welcome to the party, pal. This is a business card or a key card with the shape of what's called a lightning link on it. And the ATF is so pissed about it that they are trying to sentence a man to 110 years in federal prison over it. That's right, 110 years, AKA approximately 325 Marvel movies. So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you what exactly he's been found guilty of, what the fuck a lightning link is and how it works, and ultimately if I think he's guilty and why. So strap in, because this one's gonna be fucking interesting. Also, sorry if I sound so shitty in this video, I'm probably fighting something. I just thought that this video was extremely important to make uh, to keep you guys up to date on the latest in government fuckery. To make this even spicier, one of the men in question is Matt Hoover, who's actually a fellow gun tuber. Now it needs to be said that I'm coming at this from a place of total objectivity as much as I can. And that's pretty easy in this case, cause I, I don't know Matt. I, I don't think we've ever talked. If we have, I don't remember it. So this video is not defending a friend by any means cause I, I, I genuinely don't know the guy. But it was Matt or Matthew Hoover, uh, 39 from Wisconsin, was selling these auto key cards along with a man named Christopher Irvin, a 43 year old from Orange Park. Yeah, yeah, it was a Florida man. They were found guilty on conspiring to transfer unregistered machine gun conversion devices that they referred to as auto key cards. Additionally, Irvin was convicted of seven counts of transferring unregistered machine gun conversion devices, three counts of possessing unregistered machine gun conversion devices, and one count of structuring cash transactions to avoid currency transacting reporting requirements. Irvin faces a maximum penalty of 110 years in federal prison. Hoover got off lighter, but I mean, it's not light. He's still looking at 45 years in federal prison. Another interesting detail of the case is apparently how they were reported. One of the men was reported by a bank teller for the crime of, wait for it, trying to withdraw too much of his own money. No, I, I am not fucking with you. So that launched a federal investigation, which ended up involving the ATF, which just further proves the point that the government will sleep on a lot of shit, but don't you dare fuck around with laundering their money. Only they can do that. Also, there's a good chance that two men would still be on the streets, living their day-to-day -day lives, had some Karen just kept their fucking mouth shut. So yeah, long story short, these key cards and the design that's on them are why two men are looking at a combined total of 155 years in federal prison. So they were convicted, they were found guilty. So this being a particularly bizarre case with some potentially far-reaching implications, I found myself asking the question, is he really guilty? Before we dive into that, let's address the elephant in the room. Was he pushing boundaries on purpose? Yes, he was absolutely poking the ATF with the stick, saying, I'm not touching you. Well, now they're touching him. They're absolutely f***ing this man with a rusty tent spike. But that being said, it would be hard to convince me under the letter of the law that the man is guilty of what he's being charged with. So I just brought up letter of the law, so let's look at what the actual definition of a machine gun is. I promise I'm not arguing semantics here, this is actually important. The National Firearms Act defines the term machine gun as, quote, any weapon which shoots, is designed to shoot, or can be readily restored to shoot automatically more than one shot without manually reloading by a single function of the trigger, which is why a semi-automatic weapon is not a machine gun because you have to let go of the trigger and then pull it again. That is not a single function of the trigger. You have to actuate the trigger twice. And that phrase readily restored to shoot, that might come into play later. That's why demilled machine guns like parts kits or, or semi-automatic weapons are also not considered machine guns is because they're not readily convertible. Like it's not just like if you take it off the shelf, semi-auto uh, AR-15 or whatever, you have to do a lot of modification, drilling, you know, milling usually, and then, you know, drop in a piece. And then you know, it, it takes a little bit of work. You can't just shave down a pin and now you got a machine gun, right? At least like 99% of the time, but let's not draw attention to specific examples. So where does a lightning link fit in all of this? No pun intended. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that on an AR-15 or AR-15 derivative. Uh, this right here is an M16A1. And I'm gonna show you how the full auto function on it works. By the way, this is a machine gun and 40 millimeter grenade launcher that I do legally own. Because if you're an American, God bless us, with the right paperwork, you too can own stuff like this. One of the places to find it is over at Gunspot. They're like a gun broker alternative and they were actually nice enough to come out to the range day that me and Cody just put on a couple weeks ago. And they brought a couple of fun toys with them. So be sure to go ahead and check them out and see what they've got up. And also while I break this thing apart, I do want to also thank the main channel sponsor, SDI or the Sonora Desert Institute. If you're interested in stuff like this, they're a great place to get your start in gunsmithing and weapons technology. So I check them out in the link's description and in the pinned comment. So let's break this baby apart. So here we have for all intents and purposes, our full auto AR lower. We currently have it over in semi, which is why when I drop the hammer and then reset it, nothing happens. Until of course I let go of the trigger 
the hammer resets, and it's ready to fire again with another pull of the trigger. But oh, what is that third pin? Well, Mouseketeers, that is a surprise tool that will help us later. So as I switch this over to auto, we've now engaged our auto sear. It's this little bit sticking up above the lower right here behind the hammer. So what this does is when I pull the trigger and then the hammer resets, we've now engaged our auto sear. So when the bolt carrier comes back forward, it trips this and fires around. You see on the bottom of our bolt carrier, as it's going into battery, this little lip here catches on that auto sear. And that is what drops the hammer to fire around. Basically, it's letting you know that the bolt carrier is in position. It's in battery now, and it's ready to receive the full load of that hammer. It's ready to get hammered. There, there's so many jokes here. Because you don't want to just, you, you couldn't like just remove your disconnector because you, you know, you don't, then you just have hammer follows, light strikes and everything. Like it, a machine gun to run well needs to be timed, right? So the auto sear does exactly that. It trips the hammer exactly when it's supposed to when the uh, bolt carrier has returned to battery and the round is in the chamber. The lightning link basically does the same thing, but for semi-autos. You see that little tab on top of the lightning link? For all intents and purposes, that does the exact same job as our auto sear here. Basically what the lightning link does is it, uh, once it's hit by that same shelf on the bolt carrier group, it drops, it pushes the disconnector out of the way, which allows the hammer to fire. And it does this over and over again until you let off the trigger, you run out of ammo, or you have a malfunction because after all, we're still talking about an AR-15. Sorry, you know I had to throw one in there. But with that, it's worthy of noting that uh, the Lightning Link is not just a drop-in for every AR-15 ever made. You need the right AR lower, uh, the right fire control group, you know, trigger group. You also need a full auto-capable bolt carrier group, uh, which is perfectly legal, by the way. Also, this gun gets a good bit of use, which is why my hands are going to be filthy for the rest of this video. This M16 A1 is pretty dope. Uh, big thanks again to uh, Intel Milko for helping us out with this one. We'll, we'll do a video on this one day. We'll do some homage to Scarface or something if you guys want. I think that would be rad. So if you guys would like to see me say off to my little friend, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Anyhow, I'm gonna put this thing back together. Sweet, we are now back in business and ready to hunt Predator in the jungle. But anyhow, let's go back to the definition of a machine gun. Now the lightning link doesn't really meet the definition of machine gun, but it's kind of a weird case. It kind of falls under the same category as far as the way the NFA is, you know, actually operates uh, or is enforced. Uh, falls in the same category as like a registered auto sear or uh, a registered trigger pack, something like that. Something that really can be a drop in uh, for certain rifles and such, turn them into machine guns. So while a lightning link wouldn't normally fit the definition of machine gun or firearm, uh, it's considered a machine gun because it can, you know, just drop in and turn off the shelf semi autos into machine guns. It's that readily convertible part, right? So if he was just straight up selling those online, uh, I would totally understand the charges because that is, you know, letter of the law, th that makes sense. Of course, you ask me, the NFA is unconstitutional and bullshit in the first place, but as far as understanding the charges, the way the law is enforced, I would get it if that makes sense. But Matt was not selling lightning links though. He was selling metal key cards that had a template for lightning links engraved onto them. A template that you can easily find on Google, by the way. It's not like this is forbidden information. That being said, you can find it yourself. I am not showing actual dimensions for that on this video because frankly, I am tired of getting strikes. I'm tired, boss. Now with me comparing this to a template, it's important to make one thing very clear. This isn't one of those like model, like metal shipbuilding kits or whatever, where you know, it's just, it's engraved into it so deep that you could just kind of punch it out. That's not what this was, according to the ATF themselves. It was literally just the design drawn into the card. Like you couldn't just punch it out and then just stick it in your gun and, and you have a fucking full auto. According to the prosecution in this case, I believe uh, they had an ATF expert witness who said it took 40 minutes and a Dremel to convert one of these auto key cards into a lightning link. You give me a Dremel in the right dimensions and I can do a ghetto full auto conversion on an AK in like 10 minutes. 40 minutes with a Dremel though. That's probably somewhere in the ballpark of how long it would take you if you printed out one of those Google Images templates over a piece of sheet metal and tried to cut it out yourself using that as a, as a template. So to me, this really doesn't seem like a machine gun or a machine gun conversion device as much as it seems like one of those like 80% conversion devices, which are a thing. It's just like this isn't an AR-15 lower until you mill it. This isn't a Glock frame until you drill it. And this isn't a good kitty toucher until you kill- Sorry about that, got a little, uh 
carried away there. Anyways, so if it took an ATF expert, and I might be using that term a little loosely, a 40 minutes and a Dremel to convert this thing into a usable machine gun, then how the hell can you say that this is a ready-made machine gun? Not to belabor the point too much, but people can literally make uh, auto sear, like drop in auto sears out of bent pieces of coat hanger. Uh, like it's literally a meme, right? Or if you wanna get really crazy with it, even the 3D printed Yankee Boogle, which is just one of the 3D printed drop in auto sears that serves the same purpose. See that, that is where this gets really scary to me. If selling a template is treated like selling a machine gun itself, then how is distributing a 3D printing file for one any different? That's where this stops just being a Second Amendment issue and becomes a First Amendment free speech issue. You're saying that there is now information on the internet being distributed right now that is potentially illegal just because it contains the instructions to make an item that is legal for some people to own. But then the, just the distribution of said information is now illegal. Do you see where this becomes a really weird slippery slope really quickly? I would love to hear an argument that would actually convince me that Matt is guilty on this because I I, I don't see it, frankly, uh, knowing what I know about the case. But regardless of whether or not you personally believe that Matt is guilty, things like this can quickly lead to the normalization of more unconstitutional government authority from unelected positions over definitions, over firearms, or over speech itself. We've got to stay on top of this, guys. That's why I, even though I feel like shit, I... <coughs> timing 100. I got out of bed to make this video. Stay involved and be sure to support based groups like NAGR, FPC, and GOA. Keep pressure on your elected representatives, whether that be federal, state, or especially local. And if you haven't already, register to vote in your primaries. That way you can actually help choose people that actually represent you and want freedom and not whatever politician the two-party system shits out for you. However you choose to do it, get involved. Matt and the next guy like Matt might depend on it. Anyhow, thank you guys for sitting through a more serious one. Uh, I appreciate you guys staying with me. And as always, see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put his eyes to the top. But I can't let you can stop, 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 can stop. All right, so here we have our. our. Additionally, Irvin was convicted of seven counts of transferring unregistered machine gun conversion devices, three counts of possessing unregistered conversion devices, and one count of structuring cash. Fuck me.